Hello there. In this lesson, I'd like to talk to you about the Cauchy Riemann conditions. If you like what I do and you'd like to support it, well then Patreon is the best way to do that. So let's begin. Firstly, I'd like to do a quick recap. We know that a complex number has two components, a real component and an imaginary component. We know the building block for the real number line is the square root of plus one, while the building block for the imaginary number line is the square root of minus one. And we can represent an arbitrary complex number as z, which can be expressed in rectangular coordinates as x plus iota times y, or in polar coordinates using Euler's equation here. Now, this is a 2D complex number, so that means it can be represented on an Argand diagram, or the infinite complex plane. Now, complex numbers can be rather tricky, so if we have a single real dimension our complex number is actually 2D, but if we have three real dimensions, which happens regularly in science, engineering and maths, we're going to have a 6D complex number. And this suggests we should move away from representing a complex number in this rectangular fashion and actually say that a complex number is represented by the function f, which itself is a function of a real function u and an imaginary function v. And each of those are themselves functions of the various dimensions that we have. So in actual fact, this is how we would represent the 2D complex number. Clearly this gets more involved if you start having higher dimensions. So consider an arbitrary complex number. I'm gonna call it Z0 or Z sub zero, and it itself is given as the real component X0 plus iota times the imaginary component Y0. It can be represented on an Argand diagram in this fashion here. And the question posed in the derivation of the cauchy riemann conditions is, is differentiation valid for complex numbers? Now, of course, differentiation is valid for the real numbers, but we don't know if it's actually valid for imaginary numbers. It's not necessarily very clear or obvious. We must recall the definition of a derivative. So let's take a function, arbitrary function, I'm gonna call it f. And it's a function of the single variable x. And we're gonna take its derivative. Now of course, it's only a function of a single variable, so it's gonna be a total derivative given by a d like this, as opposed to a partial derivative if it was a function, let's say of x and y, where we would use del. Anyway, in taking a derivative, we must increment the function by an amount which we call delta x and we take f of x plus delta x, we take away from it its original position, which is simply f of x, and divide by the increment delta x. And we take the limit as delta x goes to zero, and this gives us our derivative, or our rate of change. And it is normal or customary to say that f of x is represented by y. So you say that df of x dx is equal to dy dx, and is given by this particular limit here. So consider the Argand diagram we have here, where we have our, our real component x and our imaginary component y. And here is our complex number z. Note that in the most simple terms, there are four directions on the Argand diagram or the infinite complex plane that we can approach the complex number z0. If we were to hold the imaginary component fixed, we could approach z0 from the right or from the left just by varying the real component or if we hold the real component fixed we can approach z0 from the top or the bottom by varying the imaginary component now clearly these are four special circumstances or cases we can actually approach z sub 0 from any arbitrary direction but that if we understand the four most important, well then everything else falls from that. So the question this kind of poses is, is it actually equivalent to approach Z0 from any of these directions? Does it give the same result? So we need to investigate this, but in reality what we're going to do is we are going to demand that in order for differentiation of complex numbers to make sense, we must demand that approaching z0 from the imaginary axis 
or from the real axis or for combinations of both always gives the same result. Think about when we take derivatives of real numbers. That if we increment our function by delta x or actually by negative delta x, the derivative doesn't change, its magnitude doesn't change, but simply the sign or the parity of the derivative changes. So the question we would have with our complex number is, is incrementing by plus or minus delta x the same as incrementing by plus or minus iota delta y? And that's it for this part. I'll see you in the next.